now we have uh, someone very special on stage. Uh, this is Maria. She has already done uh, multiple uh, talks, but um, this is her first real life talk. This is exciting, right? <laughs> scary. Yeah. It's more scary. I'm, I'm not alone here doing the <laughs> first time of thing. So let's welcome her with our applause and uh, let her do the thing. So hello, everyone, and thank you for having me here. Today, we're going to talk about flexible data flow architecture in Angular. Um, and before we dive into the topic, I want to steal a couple of seconds of your attention to introduce myself. Um, as Xenia stated, my name is Maria Koneva. I mostly identify as human being. I, already, I also have some other properties, but they're not relevant for this lovely conference. And to justify me standing on this stage, I work as a front-end technology lead at a middle-sized company called Aleri, and I have a PhD um, in um, linguistics. So I did study linguistics, but I didn't like it because um, there is no true or false, there is no valid or invalid, there is no compiled or not compiled. So um, there's always, it depends, it's always um, some, someone's opinion, some, someone's authority. So I fleed to web development, and what I have here, I have here some architectural questions. And again, it depends. And again, there is no true or false, there is no... Um, right or wrong, so I have to argument, I have to deep, uh, deep dive into the code, I have to talk to stakeholders, um, and there is no right solution, there is just the best, the most suitable solution for this particular use case. This is challenging, however, this is also really interesting because it makes you to uh, deal with the code concepts, it makes you to talk to people, that's why today I brought this topic to you. So we're going to talk about the architect software architecture, and one cannot talk about software architecture without showing the obligatory slide with some random pictures of buildings on it. So here's the obligatory slide with some random pictures of buildings on it, and the definition of the software architecture. So this is a set of software elements, relations among them, and the properties of the elements and relations. Um, the topic itself is huge, so there is no way I can cover the software architecture in, in, in itself in 20 minutes. So we have to focus on some, some parts of it. We could talk about how many floors the building should have. That would be something like layered architecture. We could talk about how many flats should be on one floor or what rooms should one flat have. This would be something like component design or structure. Um, but today I'm going to focus on stairs, windows, corridors, or elevators. So how do you come from the balcony to the living room? How many windows do you have in your bathroom? So in other words, I'm going to talk about um, how you pass around the data in an Angular application. In particular, I'm going to talk about these three aspects. So what are the options Angular gives you to share data among the items, like among the components, services, whatever? Um, where do you want to keep your data or handle it? And where do you need it? So what are the options um, when you can require some data? And at the beginning of my talk, I have to disappoint you. I won't go, uh, talk about state management in terms of NGRX or NGXS or any other state management um, frameworks. I will merely concentrate on the uh, native Angular capabilities because this is enough to, to fill 20 minutes. That's I, I found out this when practicing. Um, and all the state management best practices are worth a, a separate talk, maybe a, at the next NGBE conference. So let's start. Um, since we are talking about data, we can remove all the styling. <laughs> and we just end up with two uh, parts. We have the TypeScript code and we have the HTML template. And moving data in the code is um, no biggie, so we won't talk about this. But you might want to move your data from the uh, TypeScript code to the template or get some data from the template to the TypeScript. So um, at the component level, you have the following options. You have the um, text interpolation, including pipes. You have property binding. You have um, directives, something like um, structural directives, NG4, or maybe even custom uh, directives that can move some data to your template. If you use some forms, you have the option of ng model or uh, form group. Then you might get the two-way binding. And um, 
the opposite, opposite way around. You can get some data from your template through DOM events um, um, when you um, uh, parse the, uh, get the event details for some clicking, some focusing, something like this. If you want to just share the data within your template, you can go with the template variable. So you use the hashtag, you put the variable in some tag, and then you can, um, that you can request this, uh, re reference this, uh, this component um, beneath or above. Um, you have also the walkaround option via the code. So these are the options at the component level, but front-end is all about nesting. So uh, when you have the nested component, you still have the, all the previous options how to share data, but you also want to share data between the TypeScript uh, part, between the par parent and child, um, and also the HTML parts. So, if you have parent-child relationship, there's this best practice that you uh, all uh, well know um, uh, of inputs and outputs. You can also use a view child, a view children, but bear in mind what Philip just told you. Um, there are some security issues if you have the, um, the component ref. And you also might go with cont uh, content child or content children. Um, depending on the nesting type. So if you go with the content projection, you probably use content child, otherwise you would use view child. And um, you have the option of creating uh, components dynamically. It's not a really sharing data, but I just f find it crazy that you have this option with create method, creating some um, runtime um, components with a create component method that Ang Angular gives you. And if you want to share data between the HTML templates, you can again use this local um, template uh, va a variable. So again, you put this hashtag variable on, on your child, and then on in your parent, you can even call some methods of your child. Um, however, there's a caveat, because um, when you reference like this, you reference just the instance, but not the class of your child component. So if you need something static, if you need something from the class, you'd better go with view child. Um, you can, again, go via the TypeScript code, so this is a workaround with inputs, outputs, whatever, and you have the option of content projection, which is a kind of data sharing because you put some data into your parent. Moving further, um, this is, again, a quite typical situation. You have siblings, they should communicate via the parent, and if the components are not related, you have services, so this is probably something that you already know. At the app uh, level, you have a couple more options. So if you want to share data between some remote components, you have the uh, router data, so you can access it via snapshot. For example, in um, my current project, we um, place the title of a, of a component of the, um, in the snapshot, and um, using the app title service, we, just, um, uh, ac uh, we, we update the uh, page title, which is bound to this component, to this route. Um, you can also share the data uh, using injection token. So um, you might share some configuration data with this option. You still have services. Um, you might use the par parameterized routes, so it's something like product slash details slash product ID. So you might get the product ID in your component, so you might share this information via the route. And you have the good old URL parameters. So moving further, the next step is what if you want to communicate between or share data between um, two Angular applications, or maybe between the same application if the user just hits refresh and the app has to bootstrap again. You might store the, the, the state or something what you need to store in the backend, this is a valid solution, but you can also leverage the capabilities of your browser. So you might store something and, uh, and retrieve it afterwards in the session storage, in the local storage, or use some cookies. Um, we use local storage, for example, to, s uh, to save the um, settings configuration of the user. So if the user comes back, um, it's stored in, in the browser. However, please, please, please do not store there any sensitive data. Um, and again, the good old URL parameters. Um, here, we actually use this option. Uh, we have a, an Angular app which holds the overview over all settings of the user, and we have a different app which um, helps to edit those um, settings. And we pass the particular mode or the particular settings um, item by uh, the parameters so that the editing app knows what to do. It can react upon this. So, 
Here is the overview of all the options that I've mentioned. So um, how do you get the data in your component? You have the options that come from your TypeScript. You have the options that come from your template. Um, you have the options that come from outside uh, with the AJAX request or some file reading. You have um, the data that you can retrieve from the browser. Um, and you have some um, other techniques like directives that might just apply some data on your component without you being con uh, controlling this from your component. So this is a lot, and that, that makes you actually flexible in your choices. Uh, but as you know, uh, with the great flexibility, uh, the great responsibility comes. So you have to choose wisely. And for this, um, um, you should better follow some best practices. And this leads me to the next um, slide. Um, Design patterns is a very interesting topic, and actually it's worth another topic at the next <laughs> NGP conference. But today I just brought four of them, and I want to look at them from the data perspective. Um, the first is called mediator, and this is pretty straightforward. Um, you don't want your sibling components to communicate directly to each other, because then they uh, get tightly coupled. You want them to communicate via the common parent, or maybe via the service if they're not related. So the, you need a communicator which decouples it. The next um, design pattern called bridge goes in the same direction, so it also helps to um, share your data in a way that your um, components stay decoupled. Um, in the context of Angular, if you have a uh, content projection, um, do not reference in your parent the um, hard-coded um, content component. Instead, you should reference an abstraction, maybe some injection token. In your con uh, content component, you should just implement this interface. So the data sharing occurs on the, like the, the two comp uh, components, the parent one and the content component, connect each other on the abstraction level so um, that the data sharing, again, enables the uh, loosely coupled way of sharing data. The next one is Singleton. This one is simple, uh, usually. Most of the services in Angular are singletons, so this enables you to share, to update the data and keep that in a constant, a consistent way. Um, and the last one on the slide is the chain of responsibility. And um, in the Angular world, this would be the chain of HTTP interceptors. So the, the request gets in and it gets pr uh, processed till all the HTTP interceptors are done. So um, you don't have to, carry, uh, to, to care about how to uh, move this request from one interceptor to the other. You just, uh, you just uh, get it in and then get it out. Um, and it all um, is handled in an automated uh, way. So um, these four examples show you that the way you share data between your components or items uh, may affect um, the design of your um, application, and you should aim for loose, uh, loose coupling, consistent data, and automated um, data sharing, something like um, HTTP interceptors or maybe a sync pipe in your templa template. So the next uh, aspect is where to keep or handle your data. And here I have the very um, well, uh, well known example of the DOM and smart components. Um, it depends where you want to retrieve and handle, process the data, and where you just want to represent it. Th there is a common belief that um, the upper-level components should be the smart components, and the leaves should be represent uh, uh, just merely representative ones. However, in this design, you might propagate all the data all the way down um, to your leaf, and all the intermediate components will have a lot of overhead without benefits. So maybe if the, the chain of nesting is so long, you might reconsider your choice and, and design your leaf component also as a smart component, um, which will retrieve and handle the data in an encapsulated way, so you don't have to propagate it any longer. With this, there is another trade-off or another set, set of options um, regarding the responsibility for the input. Here we have the following scenario. Imagine your child component has to implement some um, dark mode or light, mo light mode or any mode. In the first option, the child component can uh, handle it by itself so that the parent has no responsibility for whatsoever happens there. 
Um, the next one would be that the parent component sets some input, true or false, and the child component decides upon this input how what mode to implement. The next stage would be that the parent component inserts the mode completely, and then um, the, ch the parent component has the full responsibility, uh, the moral responsibility for this. And the last step would be that the parent component completely inserts the um, insights, um, um, which is basically content projection. So this trade-off is interested particularly if you have some style lib um, team which delivers web components. So they have the choice of baking this button in or letting you to insert your custom button. The next aspect that I'm going to touch upon is um, the timely matters. So let's have a look at the options that Angular gives us. Um, the first one is not really about data sharing, it's more about synchronizing or updating. So depending on which stra strategy you decide to follow, um, your data will be updated, synchronized more often or maybe on some special occasions. Uh, but if you need some data in your component, you should go with the lifecycle hooks. Uh, you probably will retrieve something in the ng, uh, in, in the ng on init hook. But sometimes rendering this component doesn't make sense if the data is not there. Like the server is down, happens, and then you should better uh, show something else. In this case, you'd better go with the resolver, which is there to fetch the data before the, comp the, the um, component is being um, instantiated. Um, on the module level, you have the uh, well-known concept of laser loading. Depending on the strategy, you can decide which ones and how and when the components should be loaded, uh, the modules should be loaded. But if you need the data even before the app bootstraps, then you probably better go with the um, t uh, injection token uh, app initializer. And there you have the opportunity to um, fetch the data even before the app bootstraps. This would be a use case if you have some um, authentication. For example, if you're working on the user profile and all your app, the premise of all your app is about that the user has to be authenticated, then you need to check it before the app bootstraps and then you can re react upon it and maybe direct the user someone else, somewhere else. So, let's wrap up. Um, when you have your architectural decisions, um, it might be helpful to take the data perspective on it. And when you have this perspective, you might think about what are your options, what Angular gives you, how can you get the data, or how can you pass the data around. The second question would be where you want to handle this data. And the third, when do you need this data? So if you combine all these three aspects, I hope that you will come to the best suitable solution for your use case. That's it for today. Thank you for your attention. And if you have some questions, just look around for the person with Maria on the back um, for the discussion afterwards. Thank you.